Yes, Lord. Thank you for this blessed holy week. Lord, as we gather here, we acknowledge your presence here. Particularly, as we are going to meditate op upon your precious word, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We humbly ask you to help us to understand these lovely words so that our souls would be nourished with your powerful words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear beloved, <coughs> thank you for joining us in this Holy Week uh, special services. On three days we will continue our meditation on I am sayings of Jesus Christ. Today we have a well-known golden word in the Bible. I am the way and the truth and the life. <clears throat> now, if you look at the context in which Jesus uttered these beautiful words, we come to know a point. That is, can we question the word of God? If somebody asks that, you will definitely say, no, no, we cannot question God. But you can ask clarifying questions. That's what happened just before Jesus said these beautiful words. Thomas, it was in Thomas, so the same Thomas who came to Chennai. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? It's a genuine question, isn't it? Very, very genuine question. And that question of St. Thomas prompted Jesus Christ to say, Don't worry, I am the way, the truth and the life. <clears throat> Let me start with the way. <clears throat> now, the early Christians call their way of religious life as the way, simply the way. Because they never thought they are starting a new religion. They didn't, hi have the, they didn't have the idea of forming a new religion called Christianity. No. They thought themselves they were part of Judaism and they are just following the way that Jesus Christ asked them to lead. A particular lifestyle, a way of life. So even others called the Christians as following the way. I've given the Bible verses uh, before that, uh, John, <coughs> Moses. Yeah. In Acts chapter 9 and 2, in verse Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18, people call Christianity as simply the way because they were acting in different way. They were not like other people. Now, figuratively, in order to understand the way, <clears throat> we have to think of a literal way, a road. It has a starting point. Okay? It has a direction, a movement. You move in one particular direction. In order to reach a particular place, that very much applies to what Jesus has described figuratively as the way. I am the way. Now you have started your life journey on earth. You are leading your life. Now you have an end point. Many a time people think there is no end point. Particularly in India, they think of this world as four yugas. Okay? Now we are in the Kali Yuga, that is fourth yuga. And after that, again it will start, start from the beginning. So these four yugangal will start continuing one after the other. You will take birth one after the other. So this will go on and on. There is no end to it. But in Christianity, we say our life has a goal. We are going towards something. Now, what will take us to that end that we all long for and that we have? It is Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus said, I am the way. 
disciples were very fortunate to see him and the way he led his life the way he acted the teachings that he gave now jesus is gone he is at the right hand of god how do we know the way let me share with you a beautiful uh, testimony <clears throat> it talks about a person called frank frank sanders and he was a boxer and he had a tough mentality and he had a friend a professor called dr tom and they the professor made him to drink and he spoiled his life so frank was known as a drunkard in the village and never came to the church and he did not allow his family to come to the church now what happened in one summer a bible college student second year student was asked to go and assist the pastor in that village so he came and as he was going on a way it started raining and he saw a little girl fully drenched without an umbrella so the pastor the assistant pastor he went and helped her and gave her an umbrella and brought her to her home now that was the frank's uh, home now when he was talking to his wife and other children frank came inside and told him mm, i believe you are the new assistant pastor here don't think you can make me to come to the church you get out so the assistant pastor went away silently now on the next sunday he saw frank sitting at the back pew he was really happy because he had already come to know about frank that he was a tough person he was a drunkard and people hated him and he never respected the elders and he had a bad name in that village so people were shocked the pastor was shocked so after the service he talked to him and how do you know how, how come you are here in our church <clears throat> and then frank said pastor i was a little rude to you when you came to my house then i came to know what you did uh, to my daughter so i said in order to show my gratitude i thought i will help you in what way you are going to help me see i have earned a bad name now i am going to come to the church regularly and the other members of the congregation will be really shocked they will wonder why i have started attending the church and the news will spread more people will come to your church in that way i am going to help you indirectly anyway the pastor was happy and he started attending then he started change changing his life he stopped drinking and one day the pastor met the professor dr tom and the tom challenged the pastor you think you can you have changed frank but no i am going to change him back i am going to make him a drunkard once again particularly when we have the christmas party when we go to your next nearby uh, town to buy articles things for our children and home for christmas we will make him to drink when the pastor talk to frank the frank said pastor i am a boxer you know that and i always had a person in my corner who will encourage me give me direction how to make a punch now you are like the person who is in my corner whenever i see you i really inspire to lead a good life that's why i regularly come to the church i have made a change in my life now i don't drink now i have a happy family 
and I bought many furnitures. So I really thank you, but I always think of you. So you're always in my front. Then the pastor said, no, I won't be here with you for a long. I have to go back to my college, but God is there. There is somebody, as you put it, in your corner, and he will guide you. Pastor, I am not sure about it. Will you promise me to come back during the Christmas time? Then the assistant pastor said, yes, okay, I will come. But when Christmas came, <clears throat> the pastor couldn't come. But he was able to come on 24th afternoon. And the family said, Frank has gone to the town. Now he has taken the train. Now he will come back in the train. And in the compartment, everybody will drink. And they will force Frank also to drink. They will give their own bottle. So we don't know what to do. So the pastor was a little sorry for coming beforehand and strengthening Frank Sanders. Now the pastor and his wife, they were standing in the platform waiting for the train to come. They didn't know how the person will come back. The train came, but he was not there. Then they asked uh, people, what happened to Frank? Yes, we saw him coming to the station, but after that we didn't see him. Then somebody said he was walking towards a station where they had many uh, trucks. And as they were speaking, Frank got down from the truck outside the station. And the pastor and the wife went towards him and asked him what happened. And Frank said, Pastor, you know that I will be coming back in the train. But suddenly, there was some thought, don't go in the train. I listened to that voice. I took a truck and came here. So as you said, there was somebody in my corner guiding me, telling me what to do and what not to do. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when Jesus said, I am the way, this is what he meant. Jesus is the way for the right direction. We have a certain goal. Now, as we move on, I would like to share with you some of the things that we have with regard to the way. In the scripture, we know there are two ways. Okay, okay, you are changing it. Okay, <clears throat> two ways. In the Old Testament, we see good and straight way. Particularly, in the, I've given the Bible references. Uh, we will be sending the notes to you in the WhatsApp so that you can uh, continue to look into those Bible verses. God's word is good and straight. And he has placed two ways. The second one is evil. B. Evil and crooked way. Proverbs chapter 2 and Jeremiah chapter 18. There we see God is talking about two ways. I am placing before you a good way. And there is also an evil way. Now what I am going to do is that. I am going to show you the right way. Particularly, if we read about God's way, God's way in Isaiah chapter 55, <clears throat> and I've given many other words, God's way is perfect, it is right, it is just, it is true, and is full of grace and truth. Now, the amazing thing that I would like to point out to you, as we have seen in the testimony, in Isaiah 30, 21, there is a beautiful word of God that clearly says, when you turn right or left, we have two options in this world. You can turn left or right. Particularly in the Jewish context, <clears throat> 
the israel land is in a middle strip on one side they have philistines on the other side they had all kinds of tribes canaanites medianites and so many other people so they were caught up in the middle so god says if you try to learn turn towards philistine or when you want to turn towards canaanite there you will hear a voice you will hear a word telling you this is the way you should lead that was a clear promise that we have in the book of isaiah chapter 30 now jesus says i am the way how do we understand this jesus always also said follow me so whenever we face some options we pray to jesus to show us the right way what to choose what not to choose show us the right way lord now when you pray after that you will receive god's guidance and he will tell us which way to go that's why jesus said follow me because he has promised that he will show us the right way now i already shared with you about a doctor who always treated his patients in a christian way very patiently listening to the patients and treating them in a kind way when one of the patients asked him how are you able to do it he simply said i just asked this question what would jesus do in my place i simply do that even in our personal life god guides us jesus guides us he is the way he is the right way when we follow his way we will reach our destination now the problem with uh, in an indian context is this even though jesus said i am the way many people have no problem in accepting jesus christ as a way okay they will keep pictures of other gods and keep the picture of jesus and they will worship everyone they accept jesus christ as one among many gods but that's the challenge that we have the challenge is that people are difficult are they are in difficult position to accept jesus christ as the way the way but we say no jesus christ is the way he is the only way for our salvation it's the he is the only way to receive forgiveness of sins he is the only way to eternal life now let's move on to the truth <clears throat> jesus also said i am the truth that is he is the embodiment of his truth whatever he said is true whatever way he showed is a true way of life see there are three theories of uh, truth one is correspondence theory that is when some picture corresponds to the real object we say that is a real picture of that particular object if i show you a dog, picture of a dog and ask is it a dog we will all agree because that picture corresponds to the reality and there is one more understanding of truth that is coherence <clears throat> in mathematics it coheres 2 plus 2 is always 4 you cannot suddenly someone cannot suddenly car suddenly come up and say no 2 plus 2 is 5 we won't accept it because it coheres with reality if you have two objects and add two more object when you count it it has 4 that's all so that is called coherence theory now there is also one more theory that is pragmatic theory that is when you found some something believing something is true you can take it as true whether it's really true or not we don't accept that it has what we hold on to has practical value but at the same time just because it works 
we don't accept that for example they will say see if you think of moon as the cheese and it has some practical value or practical effort effect then you can accept that moon is a piece of cheese but christians cannot accept it when jesus said i am the truth he simply meant whatever he says is true for example i'll give you some of the hebrew words <coughs> uh, we have two words emet and amen amen we all know that jesus again and again said truly truly i say unto you actually in greek amen amen i say unto you so that's why we call him amen the word true in hebrew means believable trustworthy constant abiding for example if you say jesus gives true peace that means we receive a real peace not temporary shallow the peace that jesus gives remains with us okay in the same way when we read about true way that means it will go to the destination we want to go okay if uh, sign post says this is the way to madurai okay we believe in that and we go and we reach madurai it's not a false sign so jesus is not showing us a false way but again i will share with you the <clears throat> another example that is true way true god when we say true god what do we mean other gods are false god uh, on saturday uh, we sang a chorus <clears throat> and in one particular line i don't accept that and we all sang it happily sang it that is there is no god like jehovah there is no god like jehovah it sounds fine and it's there in the old testament there is no god like our god there is no god like jehovah but in the old testament they believed in many gods so they were able to say there is no god like jehovah but we cannot say that we cannot say that but some christians say it because some christians believe there are many gods okay they have their own god like pulayar saraswati adin solittu they have many gods we have jesus that's a wrong statement that is not biblically correct we say there is only one god they are not god at all we have only one true god and we worship him and that one god is for everyone so when we sing we should not sing there is no god like jehovah we should say there is no god other than jehovah that should be our proper statement that is the proper statement of our faith there is only one true god and we say that now in contrast we also affirm uh, or not in contrast continuing that we say god's word is true what do we mean by that god's word is true because we say god's word is true because it stands forever in isaiah chapter 55 there is a beautiful verse when i say something it will happen when i give you a promise i will do it when rain comes and waters the earth the plants will come up they will start bearing fruit in the same way when i say my word it comes it reacts it will bear fruit no isaac jo also emphasized on that god's word will full be fulfilled in our personal life in that way god's word is true and we also call god as faithful god what does that mean 
when he promises something he will do it but people they will promise something they won't do it many times but whereas god when he gives his word he will fulfill it of course in contrast we have seen in the, we see in the bible satan as a liar jesus also confirmed it he is a liar and father of all lies and we have false prophets false god so many things in contrast to jesus christ so we hold on to jesus christ because jesus is the embodiment of all truth he clearly told us about god he clearly told us up told us about our life he clearly told us that we have a soul he clearly told us that only through his death we receive forgiveness of sin only through his death and resurrection we have eternal life so jesus christ is the embodiment of truth that we always hold on to of course the gospel is true the holy spirit is the spirit of truth because he leads us into truth now there are two effects that i want you to bear in mind or both of them are told by jesus christ that is when we hold on to truth the truth purifies us sanctifies us particularly i have given the bible verse john chapter 17 verse 17 and 19 where we read when we obey the word the word will purify us many a time we know that we will want to grow in purification and god purifies us through his word so we have to read the word of god otherwise we won't receive the purification and it is the holy spirit that purifies using god's word then the truth liberates us we all know the famous verse of promise of jesus christ he said you will know the truth truth will set you free yes the word of god has set people free from all kinds of slaveries if you just look into the history of the world you will know how christians made an effort to free people based on the word of god based on the word of god missionaries did it missionaries did it in india they liberated so many people particularly they liberated women in india women folk were oppressed they were not allowed to study they were not allowed to get education and they were suppressed in many many ways but it was the missionaries who liberated them and educated them and helped them to come up in life all based on the word of god galatians chapter 3 verse 28 in christ neither male or female all are equal see sometimes this uh, pentecostal people say <coughs> that uh, Jesus gave importance only to men. Sometimes they also say only adults can get baptism. There is nothing that we see in the Bible that the apostles gave a baptism to the children. Okay? In the same way in order to reply to them we can ask them, okay? We don't have a specific words that apostles gave baptism to the children but we can ask them can you show a bible verse that jesus gave communion to women there's no specific words you cannot point out to any particular verse that jesus gave communion to women actually one pastor asked me <coughs> on the day of pentecost only men received the holy spirit not the women <laughs> i was really shocked actually when i heard that from a pastor of an independent church but when i looked into the scripture we come to know on the upper room there were 120 people 
in acts chapter 1 we read 120 people not just the 12 disciples and there were women mary mary magdalene and so many other women it is mentioned in acts chapter 1 in acts chapter 2 it says all have received the holy spirit all have started speaking in tongues so the early church accepted the fact that jesus accepts everyone now that truth liberated women folk from all so many uh, slaveries that we see in this world okay finally let me share with you a few thoughts on life yes jesus is our life see there are three stages or levels you can say simply existing is also called living for example suppose somebody is in a coma coma stage is that person living yes or no yes he is living he is breathing okay doctor say <laughs> breathing okay they are existing they are living they are living being but are they actually living a normal life no so simply existing is one level now having an active life a normal life is one thing and another level is that you have abundant life that's what jesus has promised us now this life is a power that act motivates our, ourselves and it makes our body active in john chapter 10 verse 10 jesus said i have come to give you life and life in full why did he say that now if you read john chapter 10 we come to know that there are certain things that spoil our life now we should understand uh, the statement of jesus christ that he is life only in contrast to the enemies of life for example in john chapter 8 we can move on uh, moses uh, uh, verse 44 clearly say satan satan is our enemy and he spoils our life and of course our sins pride envy anger and so many things that spoil our life now there are certain wrong ideologies in this world evil systems in this world they spoil our life now we also know many a time even our own weaknesses human weaknesses many time we worry we are afraid of certain things fear grips us we are anxious about so many things many people spend in sleepless nights because they worry about so many things there was someone <clears throat> uh, somewhere i read about an interview with a very senior person like he was 100 years old and somebody asked him <clears throat> can you give your advice from your long experience in this world can you tell us what spoiled your peace and mind the most and the senior citizen thought for some time and said <clears throat> the fear of something that never happened spoiled my peace in my mind many a time we are afraid of so many things that would never happen we imagine things we keep on thinking about the imagined things and worry ourselves now jesus says cast your burden upon the lord come to me all those are heavy laden i will give you rest so if you want to have abundant life we are called to come to jesus christ he gives us life and life in full now what are the resources that we have to have this abundant life of course god then 
Jesus Christ, the word of God. The three things that really help us to have an abundant life. The Lord wants us to lead this abundant life. Now, you have to differentiate between eternal life and abundant life. Eternal life, okay, life after death, we continue to live. But even here on earth, God wants us to lead a happy life, a normal life. And that he gives us. So Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Let us hold on to him. Let us follow him. Let us hold on to the truth that he has given us so that the truth will purify us and the truth will liberate us and we will have abundant life here on earth. This is a clear promise from Jesus Christ. Let's keep a moment of silence and reflect on the claim of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way. There are so many ways that people lead. But many of them do not lead them to the right destination. We have chosen the right way. Let's thank God for it. But in our day to day life, do we follow Jesus Christ? Do we follow the way of love? Do we follow what Jesus says in all matters, at all times? The best way is to keep in touch with Jesus and ask him to lead us every day in all matters. Yes, he has given us the truth. He has showed us who is our true God. He has showed us the true way. And he has promised that the spirit of truth will lead us into all truth. Yes, with the truth that Jesus has given Christians were able to change this world. We too are called to change this world based on the truth. Yes. Shall we take a decision to read the word of God so that the word of God will purify us? Purify us. Yes, it will liberate us from so many things, from unwanted fears, unwanted anxieties, the truth will definitely liberate us. God has given us life. Let's thank God for that. He has given us blessed life, the abundant life. He has liberated us from the power of Satan, from the power of sins, from all kinds of wrong ideologies, evil systems. But it still exists. But in the midst of all these enemies of life, God is protecting us, giving us the resources to have this abundant life on earth. Oh Lord, Thank you for giving this abundant life in our personal life. Continue to be with us. Help us to face all kinds of adversaries and enemies of this life. Help us to overcome them and lead a blessed life, O oh Lord. We hold on to you. You are always with us. We rejoice in you and help us to rejoice always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
having heard the word of god let us stand and sing the offer to him 182 182